The Intercept describes itself as an award-winning news organization. Its policies begin at The Intercept. We strive to hold the powerful accountable. But rather than take aim at the powerful, a July 24th article at The Intercept titled Abortion Rights Activists Call New Group Leading Protests a Front for a Far-Left Cult, Robert Mackey does the opposite. Mackey directs his aim at the most implacable foe of the most powerful. He directs his aim at the revolutionary leader, Bob Avakian. Now, before I get into this, let me note that another big part of what Mackey does in this hit piece is to elevate the voices of so-called veteran activists of the abortion rights movement who did absolutely nothing to fight the overturning of Roe. They capitulated in advance. And then they got mad and attacked Rise Up for Abortion Rights for mobilizing tens of thousands of people in protest, including, yes, thousands and thousands of young people, including 13, 14, 15 year olds, who, by the way, are old enough to get pregnant and be forced to have children against their will and have their lives shattered in that way and have absolutely every right to stand up and fight against this. And Rise Up for Abortion Rights was attacked for a whole host of other nonviolent, disruptive, highly impactful actions. Now, at the Rise Up for Abortion Rights website, there is a response to these attacks from that organization, which I am a part of together with others from very different political perspectives. Next week on this show, I will get into the escalating atrocities facing women now that the right to abortion has been overturned. The child victims of rape forced across state lines to get abortions. The doctors under threat. The women who are being turned away from hospitals for miscarriages, forced to bleed out and cramp up for days, risking infection or worse. And the abortion funds, some of whom are headed up by these so-called veteran abortion rights activists who attacked Rise Up for Abortion Rights, who not only are outstripped by the demand of women needing funds and resources to travel when abortion is banned where they are, but some of whom have actually shut down out of fear for their own legal safety, turning their backs on the women they claim to be serving. But here today, I wanna focus on Mackey's attack on Bob Avakian and Real Revolution and repeat my demand to the Intercept that they allow me space and their pages to respond to this attack. Starting in the title of his piece and then repeatedly throughout his article, Mackey elevates the loaded accusation that Bob Avakian and the Revcoms who follow him are a cult. This is hardly dispassionate journalism. The clear message being sent is there's no need to critically engage or think about the serious, scientific, and ongoing body of work that Bob Avakian has done on questions like why we need an actual revolution and how we could really make a revolution. There's no need to think about the vision of a new society that Bob Avakian has forged for after a revolution that's going to work to dig up all forms of oppression and exploitation. There's no need to engage the roadmap Bob Avakian has developed for how a revolution could be wrenched out of this time of profound crisis, deepening divisions, and the looming possibility of civil war. You see, by attempting to cancel Bob Avakian, Mackey and the haters that he is amplifying are trying to erase revolution. How convenient for the powerful, how out of step with what humanity needs and even The Intercept's own stated policies. The Intercept's policies go on to emphasize a commitment to, quote, truthful and aggressive reporting. Mackey is aggressive, all right, but he is not seeking the truth. Finding the truth requires sifting and following the evidence wherever it leads. It requires measuring that evidence up against something called reality. Mackey doesn't even purport to be offering evidence for his scary and smeary accusation of cult. The best he can come up with is that a lot of people are saying it, And in this case, a lot of woke opportunists and movement hacks. How is this any different than Trump peddling conspiracy theories and lies and backing it up with a lot of people are saying it. A lot of people are saying that. A lot of people said a lot of people are saying. Many, many people are saying. Some people say. A lot of people think. According to some people, you know, a lot of people are saying. Mackey dishonestly claims that we Revcoms are dedicated to spreading the ideas of the former 60s radical Bob Avakian. This is not true. We are dedicated to making a revolution, overthrowing this system of capitalism, imperialism. And we're dedicated to this because we are convinced on a scientific basis that this system cannot be reformed and must be overthrown. And on that basis, we proudly 
follow Bob Bacon and promote his leadership because he has made breakthroughs in forging the scientific approach, the strategy to make a revolution, the vision of a new society, and the leadership necessary to make this real. This matters. And this is obvious if you read any of the speeches or talks or articles from Bob Bacon. If you go to our website, if you watch this show, anybody honest can tell it's about making revolution, and that's why we follow Bob Bacon. But Mackey erases revolution. This is akin to asserting that Anthony Fauci is simply dedicated to holding press conferences while ignoring and erasing the obvious fact that Fauci has dedicated himself over a whole lifetime to public health. And it is in the service of that mission that he has done a lot of press conferences. In my article at Revcom.us, I expose more fully the utter lack of journalistic integrity displayed by Robert Mackey, the dishonesty with which he approached Rise Up for Abortion Rights, and the fact that he never reached out to me or the Revcoms at all, despite the fact that we and attacks on us are a major focus of his article. But let me close by emphasizing this once more. By attempting to cancel Bob Avakian, Mackey and these haters are really trying to cancel revolution. And Mackey's article works against and trains the Intercept's readers in methods that work against getting at the truth. And in this way, they put the Intercept's imprimatur of journalistic rigor on what is really a McCarthyite hit piece that can only serve destroying movements and revolutionaries. This is something that everybody who cares about the truth, who cares about justice, who cares about the future needs to stand against and call out. Good evening and hello. This is Pro's social media correspondent with the Revcoms reporting today with breaking news. There's a significant proportion of people capable of using their critical thinking skills. This was revealed in the overwhelming response of people on social media to this article by Robert Mackey. The Intercept was peddling lies, distortion, and slander, and the people were not buying it. Here's just some of what they said. I've never heard of this group, and yet this poorly written article does seem to enhance their image as it has all the hallmarks of a hit piece. Vague conspiracy theory insinuations with no supporting evidence and no clear point to it except to boost institutional liberals who were essential to getting Roe overturned. Looks like the Revcoms are the good guys. Bizarre and counterproductive article. Disappointing, yet unfortunately unsurprising. Capitalism is the cult. This article is nothing but absolute trash. Get it in the bin. LOL, so basically the headline should be, Abortion Rights Activists Fight for Abortion Rights? You guys broke the story wide open. Eye-opening. How are they a cult? Nothing in there read like they were doing cult-like things. This sounds more like a hit piece. Scaremongering readers with the term communism? My, my, Intercept. Page Against the Machine Bookstore tweeted, As a small progressive independent bookstore in Long Beach, California, who has hosted an event with At The Revcoms, as well as with a wide array of left-leaning activist groups, we feel this article does not paint an accurate portrait of the intentions of the group and its members. When did The Intercept become CNN? With Roe overturned, what good have all the traditional advocacy groups done? Maybe it's time for a more direct form of action. You've been posting such trash content lately at The Intercept that this is worthy of an unfollow. Terrible journalism. Far left cult? Where do we sign up? As if the entire political spectrum currently is not just centrist to fascist. This is just a taste of the disbelief and anger expressed by many who called out this unprincipled attack for the bullshit it is from people who care about integrity and reporting, who won't stand for this kind of unfounded character assassination, and who care about what is happening to women and support those who are doing something to stop it. We need a lot more of this. And people need to be thinking critically and denouncing baseless attacks aimed at extinguishing resistance and revolution. So if you stand for truth and justice, you watching this now, we encourage you to read the response to The Intercept written by Sansara Taylor at Revcom.us, and we urge you to spread this response far and wide and add your voice to those calling on The Intercept to publish a response from Sansara Taylor. Post it on your social media, tag at The Intercept and at The Revcoms.